Okay, that's one of my favorite subjects. Are there contradictions in the Bible? I remember as a brand new Christian, I'd been saved just a couple of months. I was, I was raised up in the Lutheran Church, the Mennonite Church, and the Methodist Church, and then I got saved, started riding the bus to a little independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing Baptist Church. And I started having a lot of changes in my life, and uh, you know things were really uh, changing a lot. You know, started living for the Lord, and my parents, you know, they liked all the changes, except they thought I was getting kind of, you know, radical about all this Christianity stuff. And they said, "Son, we'd like to send you to the Methodist Church camp. Maybe they can calm you down." I said, "All right, Mom." So I went to the Methodist Church camp in Bloomington, Illinois. First day at the camp, the counselor set us all down on the bunks there, and he said, "Okay, fellas, tell me your name." And we told him our name. He said, uh, I'm a student at the University of Illinois, and I want you to know I'm a humanist. I didn't know what a humanist was, so I said, well, does that mean you believe in humans? <laughs> he said, well, yeah, I do believe in humans, but that's not what that means. I said, well, do you believe the Bible? He said, no, the Bible has lots of contradictions in it. Now, I'd only been a Christian a couple of months. But I had been taught by my preacher, if somebody says there are contradictions in the Bible, hand them your Bible and say, show me one. So I handed him my Bible and said, show me one. He said, I'd be glad to. Here's what he showed me. Maybe you've seen this one before. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 12, says the earth brought forth grass and you know herbs and seeds and all that kind of stuff and trees. And this happened on the third day. The counselor said, Kent, when did God make the trees and the grass and the plants? I said, you made him on the third day. He said, that's correct. Keep, keep reading down to verse 20. Day 5. Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. He said, Kent, when did God make the birds? I said, day 5. He said, what did he make the birds out of? You know, he made Adam out of the dust and Eve out of a rib. What did he make the birds out of? I said, he made them out of the water. It says so right there. He said, that's correct. He said, now, read verse 24. And let the earth bring forth the living creature. He said, what did the animals, what were they made from? I said, they're made from the dirt. He said, when were they made? I said, they're made on day six. He said, and then in verse 26, he made man. So he said, Kent, would you agree the order of creation was plants on day three, birds out of the water on day five, animals, and then man? I said, yep, I agree. He said, okay. Now, Look at Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree. He said, hold up, Kent. I thought the trees came on day three before man. Chapter 2 has man and then the trees. Contradiction in the Bible. I was stumped. He said, oh, it gets worse. He said, in chapter 2, you have the trees made after man. Chapter 1, you have them made before man. Chapter 2, you have the birds made out of the ground. And it's made after man. And the animals made out of the ground after man, whereas chapter 1 has them made before man. I was just stumped. Ever been there? Get in an argument and you knew you're, you knew you're losing. I do that with my wife all the time. You can just tell, <laughs> I'm losing this argument. <laughs> I might as well shut up. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. By the way, it's two words, help meet. She's a help that is suitable. Help that is meet or suitable. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. Now, wait a minute. Did he make the animals and birds after man? And did he make them out of the ground? Got a contradiction here. Hmm. And he brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. No, there's no contradiction here. Here's what happened. On day one, or day three, God made the plants. On day five, he made the birds out of the water. On day six, he made the animals, and then he made man. Then he took the man and put him in the garden. And in the garden only, God made the trees grow in front of Adam, and it's only the trees that are pleasant to the sight and good for food. I mean, you can read Genesis 2. It explains that. It's not. The rest of the world is full of trees already. He's just making a few more in the garden. Then he made the animals one of each animal, in front of Adam for several reasons. Number one, if Adam was the last thing made, Satan could come along and say, Hey, Adam, I made all this. How would Adam know? There'd be no way to tell. 
God had to make it Adam and then make some more stuff. And Adam watched God make some things. So Adam knew God's the one that did this. The problem is Eve was the last thing created. She never saw God make a thing. That's why Satan came to her instead of Adam. He couldn't have tricked Adam, but he tricked Eve. Secondly, God brought these animals to Adam for several purposes. Number one, so he could name them. Number two, so he could select a wife. One by one, they came up out of the ground. Adam said, hippopotamus. No, thanks. <laughs> Giraffe. No, thanks. Alligator. No, thanks. And after God got all done making the animals, Adam named them all. And the Lord said, Adam, what do you think? He said, Lord, those are neat animals, but I don't want to marry them. He said, Adam, go to sleep, son. I got a surprise for you when you wake up. <laughs> anyway, and you all know about how that story ended up. So here we are. Anyway, uh, this is what happened. It's not a contradiction in the Bible. It's just a continuation of the story. See, chapter 2 is only expanding what happens in the garden on day 6. That's all. It's not even repeating what happened on day 1. So Adam selected a wife. Okay.